conundrum. The crew forgets that they already went through an episode where they forgot everything and forgets everything again. <laughs> the Enterprise is investigating signals that may indicate intelligent life where none was known before. Data is playing chess with Troy and she beats him with unexpected gambits and he has to make her a fancy drink in return. Beverly is examining a patient who hurt herself in the holodeck. Jumping off of cliffs, which sounded awesome. <laughs> What if somebody had some sort of pain fetish? What if somebody wanted to know what it felt like to get shot? Well, that would raise questions about how it works. If it wasn't actually causing you to get shot, why would you feel pain? I don't know. I would be jumping off some cliffs. That would be cool. <laughs> or I'd mess with other people. I'd say, hey, you want to go jump off the cliffs? And then I would secretly deprogram <laughs> the parachutes. <laughs> Riker argues with Ro about how she doesn't follow exact procedure. And she's annoyed that he's on her case all the time. Worf picks up a spaceship. They don't know what it is, nobody answers him, and it starts to scan them, which Picard just lets happen for some reason. And eventually it starts to access their computer, which might not have happened if they had done anything. And at that point he finally orders shields up. I like how he does it too. Shields up! I guess I should act like the captain once in a while. Data makes Troy her space drink, and a weird green light starts to zap everyone. And it eventually hits the bridge, and wipes everybody's memory of who anybody is, including themselves. They still have operational knowledge of the ship, but the computers are not responding. It was awesome how Worf immediately went for command. Instead of looking at the buttons on their collar, he's like, hey, I've got this pretty cool belt. <laughs> And then the guy who has never appeared before and has a bunch of lines starts asking questions. My next note is just, hmm. <laughs> I didn't suspect anything because it's not unusual for random crew members to just pop up from one episode. So I thought he would either die or we would just never see him again. Interesting. Mysterio is played by Eric Anderson, who I recognized from Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Jordy picks up debris ahead of the Enterprise. And they guess that they might have been in a battle but the computer still isn't 100% functional. But they managed to get the internal communication system working. Worf sends out a shipwide message to let everybody know what to do, and ironically, Beverly is a better doctor when she doesn't know who she is. <laughs> Ro and Riker figure out the turbo lifts and take Geordi to engineering. While Captain Worf's top priority is getting the ship battle ready. Beverly says they still have their memories, but they're blocked, and she's working on a way to access them. And Worf gets frustrated when Picard tells Beverly what their priorities should be. Ro and Riker are getting along very well, and Riker shows that his fetishes are still intact. <laughs> well, with that holodeck we just saw, I think I could conjure up an interesting program or two. They go to 10 forward, and Troy tells them that Data is apparently the bartender, and he says he is also unable to access his memory banks. Where is Guinan? I had that in my notes too, and we never find out. What if somebody was in the bathroom? Would they just assume they were the janitor and had to clean up? <laughs> and Troy is pretty much the same, because she can sense stuff, but can't be more clear than that. She knows she senses something about Riker. Jordy finds the crew manifest, and it lists everybody out in their position, including Mysterio, who is really First Officer McDuff. Worf apologizes to Picard when he learns that he is in fact not the captain. But the way he was acting, I half expected him to question if the computer had been tampered with to throw them off, because he really wanted to be the captain. Yeah, I feel like in this situation, I would have been questioning everything. I'm surprised that they all immediately went along with the new information. They have a big discussion where they determine that they are part of the United Federation of Planets and are at war with the Lycian Alliance. And the Lycians have a weapon that wipes out computers and memories, but Jordy has access to their current mission. We've been ordered to cross into Lycian territory and destroy their central command. And if they fail, the whole plan fails. Troy suggests the computer may be giving them faulty information and that they should confirm with Starfleet headquarters. But she shut down, and they head to destroy the Lycian command. Given that all the other information fits together in a way that makes sense with itself, I would think it was probably accurate. Riker takes Troy to her room, who says nothing feels right except him. He replies, that's good then goes to his room to have sex with Ro. <laughs> <laughs> the Enterprise nears their objective and encounters a Lycian warship, which they have orders to destroy. Data determines the ship is no match for the Enterprise, and they receive a hail, 
and Macduff convinces them to not answer, and they end up blowing it up. Causing Macduff to look creepily pleased. Beverly thinks she's found a way to help them get their memories back, which naturally will still take some time. And Jordy has found a way to get the computer's memories back, which naturally will still take some time. <laughs> he and Data discuss Data's uniqueness among the crew, which was interesting. Yeah, it felt like a realistic topic of conversation. They find that all of the information that could help them in any way has been wiped from the computer. Troy visits Riker in his quarters, and he clearly gets excited thinking he's going to get lucky again. Troy says she still has reservations about everything relating to the war, but Riker decides it's more interesting to brag about how good he is on the trombone and how athletic he is. He demonstrates his trombone skills, but unfortunately does not demonstrate those super high angle kicks from Conspiracy. <laughs> and right as they start to make out, Ro shows up, and then she and Riker start to make out. The officers discuss the missing files and how they are suspiciously exactly the ones they need to solve their problems. And Beverly says the memory recovery procedure is risky without the medical files. But Picard wants her to do it anyway, and Macduff volunteers. During the procedure, something goes wrong, and Beverly almost kills Macduff, which indicated to me that perhaps she already had her memories back, since she was back to her old ways. <laughs> when she stops the procedure, he says it didn't bring back any of his memories, and when no one is looking, he looks creepily pleased. Picard expresses concern to Macduff as to whether their mission can be justified, and he's bothered by how convenient all of the circumstances are. I feel as though I've been handed a weapon, sent into a room, and told to shoot a stranger. But Macduff continues to make him second-guess himself. Macduff calls Worf to his quarters and says the two of them are the warriors of the ship and must have been assigned to serve that role, and he's worried that Picard's actions may cause them to lose the war. The ship runs into what Macduff identifies as sentry pods and destroys them as they pass through to Lysian command. Without any real effort. And they reach the central command without encountering any other resistance. And it has virtually no defenses and houses over 15,000 people. At one point, Riker says they will reach optimal firing range in 55 seconds, but at the speed they were going, it looked like they would have gone well past it before that. Time is relative in space. <laughs> <laughs> Picard opts not to fire, which enrages Macduff, and he orders Worf to fire. When Worf refuses, he knocks him aside and tries to take command. Worf and Riker both shoot him with their phasers, and it turns out he's a weird, gross alien. Is there any other kind? <laughs> <laughs> they head to a starbase, and Beverly has helped them to all have total recall. <laughs> You didn't think I'd get it in there, but I managed to do it. And I guess it turns out they didn't need the medical records that Beverly said were so important earlier. And it's revealed that Macduff was a mortal enemy of the Lysians and was just using the Enterprise to win the war. Riker goes to 10 forward where he finds Troy and Roe talking. Riker is nervous because he clearly doesn't want to blow his chances for a threesome. And Troy tells him they can all have sex in her office tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Troy says losing their memories may have caused them to do the things they've always wanted, which for Riker was no different than any other time. Ro jokingly says she will treasure their time together before leaving, and Troy says he can talk to her in her office. And Riker's reaction seems like we're supposed to laugh at how things didn't work out for him, but they did. Ro and Troy both seem perfectly okay with what happened, and are seemingly willing to let it happen again. It didn't really work the way I think they intended it to. Conundrum. Overall? When this episode started, with no one remembering who they were, I was ready to be bored the entire time. But thankfully, they approached the writing in an intelligent, character-focused way that didn't give in to all the dumb jokes I was expecting, and didn't involve some dumb, nonsensical, fake science concept. It also never dragged, and didn't lead to a disappointing ending, other than that little part at the end with Riker. Focusing on the characters and their personalities without making them caricatures of themselves is something I wish the show would do more often. My only real complaint is the way they set up Macduff. I didn't suspect anything was up with him at first, because he just seemed like some random guy that pops in like they do sometimes. But then they started doing the dumb thing where he kept making that creepy smile, which was the only reason to really suspect him, but he hadn't actually done anything yet. His conversations with Picard and Worf would have been enough to make us wonder what he was going to do without outright giving away that he was the bad guy. 
and I think that would have been more effective. It wasn't as bad as what they did with the blatant bad guy in Violations, but I don't understand why they seem to want to give away the answer to the mystery before we've even started to suspect anything. But I would still say this was one of my favorite episodes so far. I gave it an A-. Okay, you and I... Yeah, I knew we were going to disagree on this one, because you don't like things that are good. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with pretty much everything you said. I gave this one a D+. Plus. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to explain myself if you give me a moment. Yeah, I hope so. Macduff's plan kind of made sense, but the execution was so laughably idiotic. For Macduff to think that he could take all the characters' personalities and viewpoints into account was stupid. And why was it just him? His race could have won easily if they wiped the crew's memories and just stuck a bunch of Macduffs on the ship. <laughs> and if they can insert Macduff into the computer as first officer, why not just make him the captain? Why not just say, there are 20 Macduffs, and they are the bridge officers? They could easily have killed everybody else by just manipulating them in whatever way they wanted and used the ship itself to do everything they needed. They didn't even need the rest of the crew. That's true. There was absolutely no reason why Macduff should have failed, save for him being a complete dumbass. Worf taking command was awesome. It would have been way more interesting if they went through the whole episode not learning what their roles were until the end. I was disappointed that it took less than 15 minutes for them to figure all of that out. Having Ro and Riker being close didn't really have much impact since she hasn't been on the show for a while. They had to remind us by having them have this huge over-the-top argument at the beginning of the episode. I felt the love triangle was too repetitive, and once it was introduced, that was it. It didn't really go anywhere. And you said the episode didn't drag, but I felt the episode itself went on for too long. It could have used another angle, which again could have been covered if they hadn't figured out who they were in 15 minutes. I wish there had been more speculative conversations, like the one Jordy and Data had. But everything fell into place way too quickly for any of that to happen. And they determined they were a warship, but nobody asked why there were kids on board. I'm pretty sure warships don't have schools and a petting zoo. Yeah, but that applies during just the normal state of the show, too. It was an interesting idea, but I didn't think it was a very good episode. Could have been handled way better. It was mostly for our benefit as the viewer, not so much the characters themselves. You have valid points about the McDuff side of things, but I thought the stuff with the main crew worked so well that I think I'm still going to stick with my A-. No one's twisting your arm. I don't know. I feel like objectively I should go down to a B plus. But like you said, it was kind of more for audience enjoyment, and I liked it a lot. I'm sticking with an A minus. I know you're dealing with a conundrum right now. <laughs> <laughs> of admitting that I'm right. 